God. Well, I said I would be short and I will do my best and be a man of my word. But actually, I said abbreviated. <laughs> and I'm, we're just going to look at one scripture real quick this morning. Uh, let me find it first and I'll tell you where to go. First Samuel chapter thirty verse six. First Samuel chapter thirty verse six, and uh, we've got a lot of. Uh, I had a lot more word to go with this this morning, but uh, if you weren't here uh, Wednesday night, I encourage you to watch that uh, video. The Lord had a great word for us about staying in the boat, and. Uh, I just I only got a brief amount of time, so I'll try to sum it up. Were the disciples following Jesus when he got into the boat to cross over when the storm came? Yes. It wasn't their idea. They were following their master, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times following the Lord. Get, so then they got over there and we looked at all the different verses and took it into context. And guess what? That boat was flooding. Now, it, not only was it taking on water, was the waves high, the boat was full of water. And I, I, I joked because I'm like, I don't know if Jesus had a shield around him, if he was down there had a stick coming up because he was in the bottom of the boat asleep and it was full of water. Asleep. And then they got in trouble for waking him up. They got reprimanded, you know. And sometimes in life we get in the middle of storms and we're like, I waited all the way till it looked impossible. It was about to sink. And then I woke you up and then I get reprimanded. I get rebuked. And he said, peace to the storm. Because the thing was, is they didn't realize that he had Je Jesus was with them. And they'd been with him everywhere he went. And Jesus is with you even in the middle of the storm. Come on. Even in the middle of the storm, he's with you. And see, they'd lost faith. That's what he rebuked them for. Oh, you a little faith. Did you not realize if I'm with you, the boat can't sink no matter what it looks like on the outside. As long as I'm on the inside with you, you can't sink. Come on. And so we need to realize that God is in it with, as long as we're in Christ. Now, I talked about drilling holes in your boats, and if you're good with things you ain't supposed to, you're drilling your own holes, you need to plug them up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's free, but it brings us to our verse today. It's a very common verse. And David was greatly distressed. How many has ever been greatly distressed? I have. I mean, just like, <laughs> you know. And it says, for the people spake of stoning him. And I don't know if all y'all have talked about it, but I know a few have talked about stoning me once or twice. <laughs> you know, they are just choked my head off until God I died. I'm not sure which way it's going. But, uh, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. And sometimes uh, people just always blame the leader no matter whose fault it is when things go wrong. Yeah. And sometimes we blame Jesus when things go wrong. <laughs> Come on. Amen. So then he goes and he says, uh, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now we've heard this preached probably a million different ways over the years. But God showed me something new about this that he wants you to look encouraged. Because usually, you know, we get along we encourage ourselves and that means we need a mini cheerleader. Come on, ain't that usually what you think? I need to encourage her. I need somebody to exhort me, to make me feel better, to soothe my spirit. I'm going to get along and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage myself in God. Lord, greater is he that's with me than he that's against me. And God says, you have got it all wrong. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, he said, he gave me some scriptures about faith. I'm not going to go into it today. But he, he spoke to me. He said, you need to look up in the Hebrew and see what that word actually means, encouraged. I, he said, I think you might get enlightened. And I thought, well, that sounds like a good idea to me. Anything the Lord says, I'm going to say, yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, it's a, don't ask me to pronounce what it has, how it sounds in the Hebrew. Just because I'm smart enough to break it down doesn't mean I've got enough hillbilly. I still got a hillbilly in me. They ain't going to recognize it anyway. <laughs> but, you know, Paul said you all too. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's Kowzak. Kowzak. Uh, and if you're looking in the Strong's Concordance, it's number H12. 
2388. You can look it up yourself in Strong's and Thayer's. And if you don't know what they are, they're all words that take the Bible back to the original Greek and Hebrew meanings. I talk about them a lot. There we go. And so it means a verb meaning to be strong, to strengthen, to be courageous, to overpower. That's just one of them. So when you start, oh, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm encouraging. I'm getting myself strong to be strengthened, to be courageous, to overpower. But uh, this says this verb is widely used to express the strength of various phenomena, such as the severity of famine, the strength of humans to overpower each other, the condition of Pharaoh's heart, Samson's strength for his last superhuman performance. Samson encouraged himself when he took out all of those Philistines. See, it wasn't just about feeling good, it was about overcoming. We're going to you can put that in your notes first. When you're encouraging yourself, it's not just so I feel happy again. It's so that you can obliterate whatever that thing is that's causing you to be distressed. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. It may be quick, but listen, when, that means I'm going to encourage myself and I'm going to overpower, overpower and obliterate whatever this thing is that's causing me to be distressed. I'm just not going to feel good. See, that's what happened. So many people try to feel good and they go back and that very thing that was distressing them is still attacking them. And they go, I got to go back to the cave and encourage myself again. And God said, I didn't mean for you to make yourself feel happy. I meant for you to get yourself empowered through the power of the Holy Ghost and destroy that thing. Amen. <laughs> I only got a little time. I got to hurry along. Okay. <laughs> so then it says Moses urges Joshua to be strong. To encourage yourself. Be strong in the Lord and faint not. When you encourage yourself, that's what he's saying. He said, be strong in me and faint not. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season thou shalt reap. It doesn't matter what the enemy assignment is to distress you. You need to say, my God is with me, he's for me, and a greater is he that's within me than he is in the world, and I'm just going to whip you right now in Jesus' name. I think I can, I know I can, I know I can through Christ. Amen. Now you're encouraged, you're going to swing over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. <laughs> Take that. After which Joshua encourages the people in the same way. See, a lot of people miss that. See, when you get encouraged, when David got encouraged, he was able to go out and get the same people that was going to kill him. He was able to encourage them to come up and follow him and go get the people, go solve the problem. You'll never get anybody to follow you while, while they're still distressed. And you'll never talk them into it. You're going to have to get a hold of that thing. Encourage yourself. Build yourself up in the Lord. Get, get full of that anointing. Take a hold of that thing that's distressing you and break it off so that the other people get some relief and come along and start following you too. That's why we teach in overcomers. You can't give what you ain't got. But through Christ, I've already got it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Behold, I've become a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun. The enemy has the same stupid tricks. He'll come along and try to distress us. It didn't, well, you're not above being distressed. That's why the Bible even says in Malachi chapter 3, you pay your tithes and offerings, that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. And now there's... there's Thousands of people walking around going today. I don't know why he keeps eating my money. And, and God said, well, you're still distressed. You won't even do the simple things I've told you to do. Amen. Hey, this is from the Holy Ghost. I'm just preaching. <laughs> Come on. Listen, we all have times that we go through distress. David was not above it. Jesus was not above it. He, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, "If this, and Lord, if it, if it can, this cup, don't pass it to me. He was praying until blood was pouring out of him. He was distressed, but he honored his father's request, and he followed it through for you and me. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? There'll be times when you feel the oppression. There'll be times when you're doing everything right. And the enemy comes to squash your spirit. He comes to hush you up, shut you up, and suck the joy right out of you. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And as long as you're feeling distressed, you'll end up being depressed. 
And you're going to, listen, I, God told me it's the, no longer just getting happy is going to do it. They're going to have to learn to overcome it. That's right. Encouraging yourself says, you know what? <laughs> That's what David did. I believe he was in there. And I wish, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> None of you people was with me when that lion came when I was a little boy, but God was. And I whipped that lion. Now, wait a minute. None of you was with me then when I whipped that bear, but God was, and I could whip this thing. And none of you was with me when I stood against that giant, Goliath, but God was, and I came in the name of the Lord, so I overcome that, so that I will not be distressed, so I will not be depressed, because greater is he that's within me than he that's within I, than he that's in the world. But then we've talked, you know, church has gotten so tight, every, everything's got to be the box. I don't want to tell nobody I'm depressed. Or I think I'm not, I'm not holy enough. I'm not a super Christian. I sometimes want to look at people and say, did you fall and bump your head? <laughs> do you really believe that? But here's the sad thing. I know they do because at one time I did. Let's just be real. So finally, I got free of all that and decided I was just going to be who God called me to be. I'm going to chase after you with all my heart. And I started to realize that he left some of them flawed people, in the, flawed people in the Bible so I could read about to encourage myself to get rid of my own flaws. You know, he, he, David had a reason to be distressed, but he knew what to do about it. And I don't believe he went there just to feel happy. I believe he went there to remind himself of what God had already done for him. Let's look a little deeper at this word, encouraged. Over in Browns, it's another type of concordance. It means a primitive root to fasten upon, hence seize, be strong, courageous, Strengthen, cure, help, repair, and fortify. So that means he's going in. I'm going to sum it up. We'll get to all these other. He's going in. He's sure it's shoring up his foundation. When he was encouraging himself, he's like, this shook me. I'm distressed. I got to go in and shore up my foundation. I got to get my expector connected back to my believer. I've got to start believing that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. I've got to go in and remind myself all those other times He was with me. I'm shoring up my foundation. I felt a little shake. I'm going to go and encourage myself and firm up my foundation through faith. This morning, maybe you need to firm up your foundation. Maybe you need to go and encourage yourself and remind yourself of what God's already done, what He said He would do, what His Word promises, and shore that thing up. Make it solid so that you can go back out and mount your defense and your offense through Christ, not through you. That's a whole other message. It's to obstinate, to bind, to restrain, to conquer. How I many know God wants you to conquer? You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. How I many know when you start reminding yourself of that, whatever that thing is that's trying to distress you starts changing. It starts breaking. To aid, to amend, to, to catch, to cleave, to confirm, to be constant, constrain, continue, to be of good courage. <laughs> Does this sound like a whole lot of other verses to you coming all into one? Because it is. I could give them to you if time permitted. To be established, to fasten, to force, to fortify, to make hard, harden. I mean, you know, listen, I, I'm going to tell you, that was one thing. He, at, at the, at the, he, said, he said, listen, when you get alone, and sometimes you got to get alone, and you got to farm up your foundation. you got to put the chinks back in. I ain't talking about getting out of church. I didn't say none of that stupid stuff. That's enough people saying that. I'm talking about just in your prayer time. And you start firming it up. And you say, you know what? God was with me here. He's with me there. And when you start reading the word of God, and maybe you go over in Hebrews and start reading the faith chapter for a little while. And you start saying, God was all them. That same God's in me. <laughs> and all of a sudden, that thing that started to distress you starts breaking. 
Because this morning, I, I believe God wants to totally break some things that have been, the enemy has been trying to use to distress you and oppress you. But you know what? I've been guilty of encouraging myself in the Lord. And listen, it works to an extent because the Bible says that He give us for the garment of praise, what? He lifts the spirit of heaviness. Right? So when we start getting in there and singing those worship songs, that thing starts coming off. But what happens is that when we stop singing, sometimes it starts to feel like it's closing back in on us because we're missing the other part of encouraging yourself and we just thought that encouraging ourselves was just praising God was enough. He said, no, you need to go in, fortify your foundation, firm it up, build it up and start speaking the word of God. And notice I didn't say not to encourage yourself by singing praise because that will help lift it off the spirit of heaviness. But I'm telling you, it goes much deeper than that if you want to break through this thing that's trying to destroy stress you. Amen. How much time I got? <laughs> Hold fast. Lean. Maintain. Play the man. What that mean? And sometimes, you know what? It's, it's, it's lost its thing. There used to be a time when you could say, you could look at another brother in the Lord. You could look at someone without being politically correct. And you could say, you need to man up. And it didn't. And they didn't take it wrong. They knew what you were saying is they was getting all up on their feelings and they needed to firm up some stuff and they needed to man up. Today, when if I say that to somebody, I get nine kinds of stuff usually. They done. They done. He's so hard on me. I, I, I was trying to encourage him, but obviously I'm not speaking the same language. So I'm working on sleeping. I'm working on changing the language, but it still means man up. Yeah. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Listen, I'm not talking about being in your own strength. You can't do none of this in your own strength, but you can do it through Christ. Amen. And I hope you didn't miss that David each time reminded himself what he'd already done in Christ Amen. and through Christ. And that's how you're going to that's how you're going to break free of this thing. How many of here was you you were you were in need of saving when you got saved? Amen. God delivered you and set you free. How many know you can go back and say that same God that delivered me then is with me now? Amen. And I don't know about you, but I've got a whole lot of other times that He's delivered me since then. There are a lot of other times that He's helped me conquer things. And so you know, when you feel this thing coming in, you need to go and shore up that foundation and set your face like flint. You know, I don't believe when David came out of there. Listen, he, nobody was for him when he went in, but people were, for, were listening to him when he came out. Right. And the only thing that changed was him. Yeah. But so many times we're waiting for everybody else to change. Do they like me yet? I'll come, I'm not coming out till they like me. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's true. Lord, has the, has, the, has the test results changed yet? I'm not coming out till they change. And that's how we pray. Come on, are y'all hearing me this morning? But you need to come out, get inside there, firm up your foundation. It says, thus saith the Lord. Y'all with me or not? Let's go. Come on. Woo. Aren't you glad you made it to church this morning? Boy, they're doing it strong in here. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So I want to encourage you today. You know, there's a, where, where's that, uh, that verse at? Uh, uh, we've been, uh, it's when we've been dismayed. We've been struck down, but not destroyed. We've been, oh, they're cranking. What is it? That's a song. I'm looking for the verse. What? I thought it was Second Corinthians. Let's just roll there for a second. Second Corinthians four seven. Second Corinthians. I had a few people that told me they didn't like my sayings and I told them it was the word of God but they didn't have nothing to say I'm like what do you think I'm quoting up here uh, Dr. <laughs> Zeus <laughs> <laughs> says but we have this treasure where in earthen vessels that point your finger at yourself and go that means me 
Yeah, earth and vessel. That treasure that God has, that glory is inside you. And it says that the excellency of the power be of God and not of us. That means that glory of the most high God. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. It's put inside this earthen vessel. It's shut up inside my bones. The power of the living God. It can change things. My tongue controls my body. And my mouth can frames the words of my, my world around me. And I, you can change the world. You can be, you may be distressed, but you can use the power of God in you. And it starts speaking the word of God out and it will change your circumstances. It will change the things going on. Amen. It says we are troubled on every side. You know, everybody likes that first part and they read this verse and they go man why do I have to be troubled to get it? Troubled on every side. Listen that means there's no way out. How I many when David went in that cave there was no way out. I don't even know if he went in there of his own. He's like, that's the only place left. i got to retreat somewhere. <laughs> and sometimes that's what it feels like. Then he goes on to say, <laughs> yet distressed. Now, come on. He's talking about it right here. Yet I'm distressed. But he says, we are not, we are, yet not, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Listen, he says, just because you have trouble on every side, it's not, doesn't mean you need to get distressed. You need to get in and encourage yourself, firm up your foundations, remind yourself of that treasure that God has put inside you that's going to use to overcome those things. Amen. He said, we are perplexed, but not in despair. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad God shoots it straight, even if preachers don't. <laughs> he said, listen, he didn't say that you wouldn't be uh, have trouble. He didn't say that you wouldn't have stuff come against you. But he did say he'd be with you and help you overcome it every step of the way. <laughs> so then he says, we're not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. I've heard preachers try to preach their way around all this all my life. Listen, if it's in there, you're going to go through it. You might as well have, you might as well might as well firm up your foundation and realize you don't have to be one being beaten going through it. You can go through it more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus because that's what He promised. Just because you have to face something doesn't mean you have to let something whip you. Cast down, but not destroyed. You know, I remember we used to sing this little song when I was growing up like that. Boy, you get that cast down part and everybody would be sh shouting, hooping, and hollering because some of them had been through some things. Some of them had faced some things and the earth God had been with them. They had been distressed and he'd been with them and they encouraged themselves. And when they would sing these old songs with the word of God, they would get in there and it would mean something to them. They would encourage them. I've been cast down, but I've not been. I remember that one time the devil had me on the ropes, man. He thought I was down and out. That doctor came in and said I had cancer. But my God healed me. He delivered me. I can go on and on and on, but listen, I also know what it's like whenever he don't give up so easy, when it's years, when days turn into weeks, and weeks turn into months, and months turn into years. But let me tell you, that God that's inside me is still greater than. Amen. I will not be distressed. I won't be perplexed. I won't throw in the towel. I will get and encourage myself. I will, I will look in the Word of God. I will find the Word of God that has to do with my situation. I will remind myself of the things He's brought me through. And I will sure up my, I will firm up my solid foundation. <laughs> Amen. Let me tell you. It means to mend, become mighty, prevail, to be recovered, to repair. How I many know sometimes it means when you get into places you're distressed, it's a good sign that your foundation needs some repair. Instead of taking it and letting anybody beat you up for it, go and repair your foundation so you can stand against him in that hour. To retain, to seize, to strengthen. To be stout. I mean, when a, when a foundation is stout, there's nothing that can tear it. Nothing can tear it down. They can bring all they want. It becomes unmovable. You know, those, those towers, when they bring them up, they go down probably, they go down almost uh, half as deep as they go up, usually sometimes, if not more. 
The foundation is something mighty under the ground. You'll never see it, but it's what makes that whole thing possible. Come on, are you with me this morning? Amen. To be strong, to be sure, to be urgent, to behave self-valiantly, and to withstand. He says he'll make you to be able to withstand all the wiles of the enemy. And I came to encourage you this morning. You may be distressed, but you're not abandoned. You're not on your own. You just need to start firming up your foundation. You need to get your game face on, get your expector connected back to your believer, get full of the word of God, and say, not this time, devil. Not this way, devil. <laughs> you know, there's an appointed time for me to die, but there's never an appointed time for me to go sick. So sickness is not from God. I do not receive it. It's not in my body, and I will not let it remain in my body. Amen. I'm going to become the man he called me to be. This church will be what he called to be. I believe there's millions, literally souls on the line that's going to flow out of this house. The devil hates broken chains, church. I'm happy because if he hates it, we're doing it right. Amen. But we will not be distressed. And if we, when we, but we, sometimes we will feel distressed. We will not be in distress. But when we feel it, we're going to remind, we'll remind ourselves of this simple message on this snowy Sunday morning. We're going to say, I need to go in and start firming up my foundation. I want to be like David. I want to firm it up. I want to remind myself of all the great things God has done for me, through me, and in me. And I'm going to be that man and woman of God. And hell, the Bible says that I'm going to build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, I don't care what everybody else is preaching. I don't care what everybody else is saying is okay. I'm going, I care what the word of God says right here. I want to live it. I want to be it. I don't care if all the world decides that I'm wrong. It's okay. I'm going to preach the truth in love. I ain't talking about beating on nobody. I'm talking about in love saying, listen, if you don't do this, you're going to split hell wide open. And say, so, listen, they ain't going to be ready to hear that until they know that I care. I'm going to have to have a relationship with them. I'm going to have to love on them for a little while. Come on, I, I, I can't come out of the gate beating them with the word of God. I would have smacked somebody they treated me that way back in the day. <laughs> come on. But I came to tell you that you might feel you're in distress this morning, but there is one that's more than able. His name is Jesus Christ, and there's the power of the Holy Ghost, and He will fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost, Romans 15, 13. And He said He, he came to heal your body. He came to save your soul, Luke 4, 18. He, seemed to catch, he came to set the captives free. There is nothing in this world you have to be bound by or controlled by. It has no control over you, but you need to learn who you are in Christ, and when you start to feel this way, it's okay, but you're going to have to get alone and firm yourself up in the foundation of the word of God and say not today devil listen you maybe not maybe you don't need to listen to five million preachers maybe you need to get in the word of God and start breaking it down Amen. <laughs> glory I'm on sister Bonnie's uh, frequency today it's driving me crazy <laughs> she's like it's good pastor but you're right on my nerve and the only one I got left her <laughs> I know what that's like, Sister Bonnie, since I've gotten older. I'm not old, but I'll be honest. There'll be certain things that come on the TV, and everybody else will be like, and I'll be wincing just that right frequency. It just gets you. If you don't know what that is, you'll experience it someday. Yeah, we're just aimed right at you. We want to make, I don't know what they're trying to say. So it's going to encourage me, right? That's the job. I want to get you to heaven, but I want you to take as many people with you as you can. Years ago, oh man, this vision just came flooding back. Years ago, when I first found his spirit riders and things, God gave me, I want to be, when I'm going to heaven, I want to be reaching down and trying to grab people with me, speaking the word of God into them. And, you know, at the very last minute, sketching them right out of the devil's jaws, right out of hell. That's been my heart. It'll always be my heart. But listen, I understand some of you have been distressed, maybe even a little depressed. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. I pray that you came away encouraged today. I pray you go home and you get it in there and you start shoring up your foundation. You say, all right, I'm on to you now, stupid. <laughs> I'm shoring up the foundation. Amen. I'm going to knock a fool out. <laughs>
And let me tell you, I joke about it. My wife knows when I get in that frame of mind, she just steers clear. I'm not talking about her. I'm on a little bit. She's, she knows when I've had it and I'm on the, it, it's, it's war time. And she says, she just like, give daddy some room. He's about to knock somebody out. <laughs> somebody acting a fool somewhere. He's going in deep. Just let him be for a while. I don't know why I'm going to share this, but I will. But I believe it has to do with this firming up your foundation. I'm sure not just telling it for my glory. I'm having a little trouble telling it. But we were talking. I'm needing a new recliner. I think it's like 15 years old. and It still works. I might bless somebody else with it. But for a man of my stature, it's starting to show its age. <laughs> I'm a lighter individual. It might last a while longer. But we're in a movie. How many remember uh, Brother Kevin Simberger? He, uh -huh. he does the power team, oh, yeah, and he yeah. owns a moving company. And, uh, someone blessed us, uh, and he came and helped me move, and we moved. And uh, I didn't know how to take this at first. I told Pastor, the pastor Tammy was watching, and she didn't even realize what was going on. But his, he has a foreman that works for him. Tyler grabbed my chair to carry it out, and I guess Tyler about went out on the floor. And I didn't know. I thought maybe his back hurt him or whatever. And my brother Kevin Sinberger grabbed it. He got about halfway out. He was stumbling all over the place. He said, Pastor, it ain't fair. You sit and pray in this thing all day, every day, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, the anointing's so strong, we can't carry it out. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? But I can't tell you how many times that I sit there and I firm my foundation and I firmed your foundation from afar and prayed for you. And it's vital to do in these last days. And you know, I don't always like it that I got to preach the way I have to preach, which sometimes, like, you know, there's things you can be, could be doing that can be open doorways that you need to shut if you know you have them. But I didn't want to talk about that today. I didn't feel like I had to. I just came to tell you that if you're distressed, get along and firm up your foundation. But uh, we love you. Praise God, it's still before noon. <laughs> uh, I really, how many felt the power of the Lord here today? Amen. Would you come touch? How, how many would, How are going to go home and firm up their foundation? Amen. All right. Will there be anybody here that wants to rededicate their life this morning or get saved? Anybody? One hand? Two, Two hands? Three hands. All right. Let's pray. Y'all repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, believe you died on the cross I believe you died on the cross with me on your mind. On your mind. And, I and I believe that you rose again, you rose again. on the third day. So that, I can be free. so that I can be free. And I believe you went down to hell and, and got the keys of death, hell, and the grave and, the and, the grave. and conquered the enemy, and conquered the enemy. Once, and for all. once and for all. And I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. And I choose to make you Lord of my life. And right now, I come out of agreement with everything and anything that's not of God or from God. And I ask the Holy Spirit to come in and clean house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we just thank you. There's 10,000 angels partying in heaven right now for you that came back. Glory to God. And Lord, I just thank you for the rest that are here today. And they say, Lord, we just thank you for encouraging us. And Lord, we see where we need to firm up our foundation. And Lord, we pray that you'll show us quickly the areas. And Lord, give us the word to strengthen it, God. And Lord, we just thank you and tell you that we love you and give you all the praise. In Jesus' strong name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Sister, De so, Pastor, T no, you got Josiah on your lap. He's unconscious. <laughs> Poor little guy's not feeling well. Be healed in Jesus' name.
Sister Deb, will you come uh, dismiss us in prayer? Thank you for coming. Please be careful leaving sidewalks, all those things. Uh, just be careful. We love you. I was going to make a joke. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the fresh rain of the word that you brought forth today. Lord, I ask that it just that we take it and we let it settle in, that we meditate on it and, and get it inside of us. Help us to, to make that firm foundation in our life, Lord. Show us whatever is not of you to take it completely out, fully and completely. Lord, we ask that you guide and direct us through this week as we go out and Inside these walls and the people that you bring into our lives that we're allowed to, to to speak into theirs because of you pouring into their life helping them to know you and, and to come close to you Lord we just thank you for everything that you're doing here through Broken Change Church Lord we thank you for the pastors as they pour into us as they mentor us as they teach us as they they minister to us to help us grow to give us the tools that we need for the outside. God, guide and direct us through this week. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.